this one, this one talk is considered to be a bit of a brief introduction into type checking in Ruby. Um, and I should enlist things that I'm not going to talk about. First of all, I'm not going to talk about types in Ruby themselves because uh, this is quite complex subject uh, with a lot of uh, types math. And uh, I, I tend to ignore it for now and uh, just prepare different talk of, about that. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to talk about existing solution sorbet because uh, everyone who was interested in it, in it is already familiar with it. It exists on market like for two years. So this talk will be about uh, modern type checking tools introduced in uh, Ruby 2.7 and actually uh, planned uh, to start fully working in Ruby 3.0. And uh, I'm going to skip uh, self-presentation because everyone here knows me for a while. So let's just save time and uh, go straight to the subject. So uh, the brief description of situation with type checking in Ruby, it's uh, like I XKCD uh, famous comic uh, regarding 14 competing standards. And now I will explain why this happened. So what do we have at the moment? We have uh, three type checkers. It's uh, like Sorbet, uh, the oldest and most major one, uh, steep, uh, which borrowed a lot from RBS and uh, RBS uh, tests themselves. Uh, type signatures generators and type sig signature standards. It's uh, Sorbet RBI and RBS itself. And uh, type signature generators, which are Sorbet, RBS prototype and type proof. Uh, so what do we have here? Uh, we have the Quithic not invented here syndrome because we had uh, Sorbet previously and then Ruby core team uh, decided that, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, it's not the best option because it uh, wasn't invented uh, inside Ruby core team. So they, they did RBS. And uh, let's take a look on RBS tool set. So RBS consists, uh, it's like a mul uh, multiple uh, uh, CLI applications uh, or most level commons inside one application, which consists of a number of uh, sub commons. Uh, and let's review them just one by one. So first one is AST. Uh, it's probably a left for uh, debug and automation purposes because it's print uh, JSON representation of uh, AST abstract syntax tree of uh, loaded environment. I can't really imagine uh, when just regular Ruby developer needs this. At least, at least the classes, models and signatures in existing type system. Uh, and uh, Ruby type system itself uh, just evaluates every signature present in an environment. Ancestors, it shows ancestors of given class or model. Uh, I don't know well why, why this exists because uh, we have ancestors in uh, like Ruby console, but this one mostly corresponds to the type system. So if you have some interface declared or a type template, uh, it will be used. Methods and methods uh, to in simplest, most is the same thing. We got methods just in lists, uh, methods defined in given class or model, and methods uh, shows the exact type signature and information about a given method in given ob object or class or model. Uh, validate, it's a self check health check of uh, Ruby type signatures themselves. Uh, so it validates uh, current uh, RBS files you have in uh, your project and plus vendor ones, which are rendered with RBS against your existing environment. Uh, constant, 
which simply resolves a constant based on Ruby type signatures. Path shows where it takes those type signatures. Prototype, the most interesting one because it generates prototypes of RBS signatures from existing files and existing code. Vendor. Uh, it's like bundle vendor. It uh, just downloads uh, signatures from uh, your from your standard library, from your RBS inside your project directory to have them included. In case if you want to take a look or want to refer them, uh, parse. It's uh, just a check-in. It gives uh, it provides given signature files uh, and output errors. And uh, test. Uh, test is a really interesting one because uh, it's the one uh, which uh, which more refers to the type checking itself. Because uh, before I started with RBS, I actually thought that it's more like a bus, uh, more like a foundation of Ruby type system without uh, any type checking. Uh, things that should be done by another utilities. But that, that's not true. So actually test, uh, it's a specific uh, setup, uh, test setup hook, which uh, goes with your tests and provides uh, type checking uh, at the same time. So you'll be able to correct your signatures or tests if, you are, if they are not corresponding each one, each another. So, Let's take a look on a first signature. It's uh, it, it generated by RBS uh, prototype uh, RB mode, uh, and uh, RBS uh, prototype uh, has three three modes. It's uh, RB, uh, RBI, and uh, runtime. I'll tell about each one really quick. So RB just analyzes uh, file. Uh, Ruby file as an input and uh, provides a type signature as an output. So here we have a simple calculator, which uh, just take two arguments and uh, does some operations with them. And here we have type signature. Uh, it's uh, pretty, pretty clear, pretty, pretty easy here. So it uh, repeats the structure of file but instead of implementation, it just shows a type. Uh, so we have a uh, column here and uh, we have a type which is uh, untyped here in this case. Or for method signature, we do have uh, here a name of method, colon, and types of arguments. And after arrow, we have an outcome, the result of uh, execution of this method. And in case if we have we don't have any arguments, we just have uh, parentheses here. Uh, as as you see, uh, this uh, signature is pretty very allowing. It uh, allows our anything. So you know it's like with that infamous video when. Uh, uh, some uh, boy tries uh, to hit figures into, into holes and uh, puts all them in square. Uh, that another one, it's a uh, runtime. Runtime uh, does an execution of your code and tries to suggest, uh, tries to suggest uh, what uh, uh, what signatures do, will you have in that case? It doesn't really differ here, but uh, because of execution, it uh, converts auto reader uh, into two methods, arg1 and arg2. That's the only difference, uh, but uh, runtime is really usable if you want to work with uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, meta programming because it's it at least tries to execute. Uh, Metaprogramming is not really good supported. And that's the first thing why I shouldn't consider all this stuff as a production ready. Because uh, 
rails, so which will be main subject of that type checking. Uh, it contains a lot of magic, uh, a lot of meta programming, which leads uh, actually to a lot of uh, uh, needed to write signatures. Well, uh, let's continue then. Uh, and we have our Ruby uh, RBS prototype, uh, uh, name it RBI mode. Oh, hello, Marcus. Uh, and uh, what what do, what do we do here? Uh, so we have as an input we have RBI signature, and uh, we put it as input for uh, for our Ruby prototype RBI, and we have RBS signature as an outcome. Uh, the conversion itself isn't best in the world, but uh, good enough to convert something simple. So. Uh, Corresponding to sorbet notation, we do have a signature which uh, declare params as x as integer and as outcome of method as void. And uh, RBS one is much shorter. But the typing and type names are mostly the same. However, it doesn't work well with some, thing, some more complicated thing like type aliases. So what do we have? Uh, this one I took from active record auto-generated uh, signatures, and we had two type aliases here, uh, where I did can type function, uh, which is simply type alias to the proc, and association callback, which is uh, type alias to kneelable anything between symbol, string, void, proc, and uh, array containing uh, uh, anything between symbol, proc, and void. Uh, so it's an automated output, and it uh, doesn't simply recognize any all of this stuff. But uh, the real uh, corresponding conversion would be uh, something like that. So we describe a type, we describe an alias, and alias in RBS signatures uh, starts with a uh, small letter and just uh, give it equality. And the same for association callback. So we, we have a selection between types here and array with, uh, as a container type and make all of it nilable. So it's optional. Um, and now, how do we do our type signatures in reality? Uh, we actually take uh, several uh, outputs. We take uh, output from uh, RB, RBS prototype RB. Uh, we have uh, outcome from RBS prototype uh, uh, runtime. And uh, at the same time, we still need to, to write some signatures uh, just by hand because uh, it there cannot be recognizable by runtime execution. Uh, so here we have uh, our, our class, and that's a result uh, with uh, something merging by hand with uh, added corrections. So I declared a type alias result, which is simply something uh, which can be integer or float, and just put in it everything on every method as an outcome and uh, call method uh, takes method name as uh, sim uh, as only symbols. Uh, by the way, if you want to ask me something uh, during the talk, uh, just uh, unmute and ask. It will be much more suitable and much more quicker than having separate questions and answer session. I forgot to mention it. So at the beginning of uh, my talk, and I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, so to, to extend uh, type signatures uh, created by uh, RBS prototype, we have another tool, named type proof. Type proof, uh, type proof is uh, something like Ruby interpreter, 
which doesn't really execute the code, but it follows the execution to create a proper type signatures based on this execution. And if a type proof can't reach any code, it just produces untyped stops. Uh, it has several specific points. So it needs entry point. Uh, you can declare, declare a class, but if uh, you don't call anything from that class, uh, type proof will not enter it and will just uh, stop it with untyped. Meta programming is only partially supported. Uh, I can say that uh, different things like define methods, instance civil, and something like that so not fully followed. Uh, as far as I remember, it has uh, like depth of uh, five diving inside methods. It doesn't handle meta classes anyway. And it supports only array and hash container types. Uh, what is container type? It's simply just a type which uh, contains uh, values uh, of other type. Uh, let's take a bit deeper look on container type just, just to explain how it works. So we have uh, some stop class, uh, which has uh, effectively two instance variables. Uh, it's x, uh, which is an array with string in it, and y, which is hash with uh, key uh, and value. Uh, and uh, keys are symbols and values are both integer and string. And two methods. Uh, it's uh, uh, method foo, which just simply calls uh, x instance variable and method bar, which uh, just uh, calls y. And we have uh, interesting thing here. Uh, it's a specific of type proof. It's a uh, P instruction, it uh, replaces kernel P method. Uh, we, and uh, instead of printing of value of a code method, it will just uh, print uh, a type of uh, executed method as an outcome, as a comment in a generator signature. So when we'll execute uh, type proof uh, some stubber B, we'll receive uh, this result. Uh, first, uh, it goes uh, uh, output of uh, P instruction. So in this case, it's uh, test underscore four RB, uh, 16 line, and we have uh, array of strings. And for next line, we do have hash with uh, next structure order, and which uh, takes integer as value and value, which takes string as value. Uh, I should name it in another manner because uh, having <laughs> like value and value is a bit confusing. Uh, anyway, and here we have a class, uh, a class uh, type signature. So we we have x, which is array of string. So exactly the same type signatures as for methods, and we uh, we do have them populated. Uh, we have a tricky moment here because uh, uh, not, uh, no one of uh, tools so we are using for generating type signatures uh, recognize that initialize a special hook method which uh, actually uh, uh, returns uh, an instance of class. Uh, so uh, instead of that, it considers that uh, it's just a regular method. So last evaluated line will provide the value. It's sort of fun, but uh, we can do anything with it now. And uh, I'm going to check how probably we have an issue in RBS already existing about that. Uh, anyway, uh, this uh, already covers uh, a bit of things managed by dry types. So it slowly replaces uh, dry type stuff. Uh, however, it's a bit less agile than dry types. Well, uh, let's proceed. Uh, you can try uh, type prof and its generator of type signatures online. Uh, you can uh, recognize it from uh, QR code 
work uh, on uh, this slide or just take a new URL from this slide. Uh, by the way, uh, don't forget that type proof needs some sort of uh, entry points. So at least don't forget to call your methods and as a best uh, thing, uh, try to provide some sort of uh, handwritten tests or assertions. Something like uh, mini test uh, stuff without stops should, should work really good. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So how we are building our signatures like now in summary. So we generate stops themselves with RBS prototype RB and file name as an input or set of file names. We execute type proof over those uh, sources with some kernel P calls to reveal types uh, more strictly. We run pro additional prototyping by RBS prototype runtime and merge all of this, uh, sorry, but by hand. We don't have any tool to merge uh, uh, to merge type signatures. However, it shouldn't be that hard because we are going from uh, less strict to more strict type signatures. Okay, uh, let's proceed uh, to type checking itself. Because uh, before we just looked on how do we generate our signatures, but what we should do with them. So for type checking itself, we just have only one tool. Uh, which uh, works with uh, uh, Ruby starting from uh, 2.6, if I remember correctly. I ensured only that it works with 2.7 because it fails on Ruby 3.0 right now. And probably it's a known bug. I hadn't issued it already. It named it Steep. Uh, Steep, it's a simply type checker and it uh, has a sort of uh, another configuration file in your project. Uh, so to generate it, we execute step in it, which generates a step file. Step file, we can see at the, at the right, and it has a really simple structure. We have uh, different targets. Uh, inside each target, we define where we store our signatures. Uh, which uh, directories or files or globes do. We can exclude something and we can add uh, some extra libraries of signatures. Uh, and it takes uh, those uh, libraries from RBS. So it has plenty of uh, already uh, generated signatures and uh, they are not that strict as you can uh, imagine because uh, in some of them uh, they are still untyped. So that's why RBS uh, requests for help uh, with acetylib signatures. Uh, next target, uh, it's uh, just spec target, which takes uh, multiple directories uh, as signatures input, uh, checks uh, only spec directory and uh, uh, takes uh, and have some commented uh, libraries references. Uh, don't take a look that uh, it referred to library or spec. We don't have any RSpec type signatures yet. It's just an example. Okay, so we have our step file. Uh, we have uh, our type signatures. We have our sources. And we do want to perform type, uh, type checks. So we run a command name it step check. Uh, it will show some outputs, uh, mostly similar to the Rubicop output, probably, because it shows a line where issues happened and uh, some sort of uh, name of issue. And uh, for having some uh, pretty stats uh, in your probably CI, uh, we do have uh, steep stats here, uh, which outputs a uh, result of type checking as a CSV. I'll show all of this a bit later. Uh, and now it's time to show it actually. <laughs> so I'm uh, going to start a new share and uh, going to show some real code. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, 
so we do have a calculator here and uh, some sort of uh, project structure. Uh, but before that, I'm, I'm going to just uh, show uh, the results of uh, some comments uh, I mentioned before. So for example, we do have uh, RBS vendor, which uh, effectively vendors everything uh, that you have in RBS signatures uh, just into your project. So I can take a look on them and just refer to them. Like looking uh, at the signature of uh, false class, which is uh, part of uh, Boolean type. And we have uh, uh, part of uh, really untyped objects. And uh, that's the first skyweed uh, I've seen in RBS because so we have untyped and uh, we don't exactly know, is it uh, not recognized type or just uh, some sort of undefined type uh, which can be uh, just like placeholder. And this, uh, for example, I like uh, programming languages with strict types and strict type system. So this makes me a bit of angry. Uh, but anyway, if you are familiar with uh, TypeScript type system, uh, untyped, it's just a pretty similar thing to any. Uh, Okay, uh, and interesting thing that uh, some of uh, those evaluations uh, provide just not a type, but just a strict literal. So for method to string, we do have only false outcome here. And th this means that uh, it will be not some, some generic string, which is uh, like uh, more wider th than just having one literal. Okay. Uh, Let's take a look on uh, our calculator uh, Ruby type signature. So we do have uh, some specs here, which consist of two contexts. It's integer and float. And now I'm, uh, yeah, interesting stuff here. Uh, returning back to the steep file, uh, I have a check GAM file here just to show how uh, how type checking works. Uh, but uh, this means that I should describe a type signature for my GAM file. Uh, so in this case, I use just uh, source, GAM, and group uh, instructions of Bundler. And uh, it's executed inside of uh, main context. So, uh, and Bundler executes its uh, in Bundler context. So in case of your DSLs, which uh, will be checked uh, independently, you will need to extend uh, object class. So here we have source, which takes uh, source as a string and provides a void output, which is not effectively true, but we are not using this output, uh, so we can place void here. Uh, and here we have uh, gam, which uh, exactly the same as a type signature with just different uh, name of argument and group, which has something new for us. So we have a symbol argument group and we have a block described here. And we, with block itself, it has uh, its independent type signature. So it takes no arguments and returns void. And the method itself returns void. Okay, uh, I'm going to open terminal, hope it will run quick. Okay, cool. And uh, let's take a look on RBS stats. Uh, not RBS, but steep stats. Here is our type checking. And uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, uh, is CSV stuff. So probably just to provide a more suitable outcome. I'm, I don't know why it's not JSON, which is uh, like standard de facto for machine-based interchange. Uh, but CSV, oh, that's uh, totally okay. Just probably to output stretch spreadsheets. So what do we have here? We have several columns, it's a uh, target. Uh, target uh, came from steep file. 
we have a file name which do we have here it's status if uh, type checking was failed or succeeded and uh, mostly it uh, uh, fails uh, on uh, unparsable files because uh, if file is parsable but type check is uh, violated uh, it just goes into untyped uh, calls count so we have uh, 17 type typed calls zero untyped calls uh, the all amount of calls are 21 and typed percent uh, which is me which simply means so uh, what was covered by type signatures is like 80 percent uh, almost 81 and for gem file we we simply have uh, seven typed calls and from seven all calls so it's 100% uh, covered uh, now let's take a look uh, once again on our calculator uh, type uh, type signature so we have a really simple case here so it's class which takes uh, integer or float uh, as uh, an argument and as a second argument and provides with the same the same type of outcome uh, but now when when i'll exec stick check it's not i uh, do receive uh, four errors and so uh, what do we see here uh, because of because of uh, method name plus and integer and float as a receiver uh, it actually goes here in uh, integer for example and takes all of these outcomes as a possible outcomes of this method and the same comes for float and that's why we received uh, this type signature and uh, i was trying to force it to work uh, but uh, actually i failed with it before uh, before presentation uh, and i spent like uh, uh, 30 minutes already so from my perspective it's not the best uh, user experience for type checking but it, it's predictable outcome actually because uh, ruby tries to be so general and uh, its type system is a bit of uh, how to say, uh, based it on duck typing, which effectively led you to this case, when you do have a much more extended type signature of method than you initially expected. Because it all comes from parent signatures. Uh, okay, uh, so let's return back to the presentation. uh so uh the question is is can i use it on production well ac actually you can it promises a lot of fun you know and uh, my fun is not your fun <laughs> so actually it means uh, that you will have uh, a lot of hours of debugging correcting your signatures because uh all this uh, type checking stuff in ruby prefers explicit over implicit so uh, it actually demands explicitness as it mentioned below uh, and you will have uh, a lot of fun time uh, to trying to get rid of uh, refinements uh, of uh, some meta programmings uh, uh, just, uh, replacing splits uh, with a uh, strict amount of type signet with, with strict type signatures uh, it still lacks of proper meta programming support so you can't uh, use it with uh, Rails models or can, but with limited functionality. Uh, we have effectively three uh, uh, signature generation tools and no one of them is perfect. You, you still need uh, to write them by hand yourself. Uh, as it was mentioned, it demands explicitness for uh, type signatures. So you can just provide uh, split operator options and uh, mention it, uh, it it will be hash uh, because uh, 
it will demand uh, to provide your exact uh, keyword arguments. Oh, uh, well, but that's okay. And uh, you still can use it for some simple service objects. And uh, I, I actually think that it can be really useful for some of my projects uh, just as a replacement of uh, dry types because we already know some uh, sort of uh, arguments that are coming and I'll be glad to get rid of one of my dependencies. Uh, and uh, it's in its current state, it's still not replacement for a sorbet, unfortunately, but uh, it evolves quickly, it's uh, very young. And uh, I, I'm actually thinking that uh, in like uh, maybe a year, I'll be uh, preparing another talk uh, talking about now, uh, now measure and more ready to production use uh, type system in Ruby. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Mikhail. Yeah, I got one question. Yeah. yeah? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I got one question. Um, so, uh, Mike, uh, I, I'm not sure. Can I use uh, Ruby tree uh, without Airbus? You definitely Is can. It... It's, All not, right. it's not a required thing. Uh, so, Ruby RBS, it's just a sort of uh, helper, you know? Uh, it's a thing that uh, uh, I, ca I can uh, actually at that moment I can pass uh, the word to the Marcus because uh, his uh, gem mutant uh, it's something uh, that's uh, trying to resolve this almost the same thing uh, that's targeted by RBS. So just to ensure that you have everything covered and uh, you have uh, uh, proper types and uh, you uh, you operate. Uh, right when you receive some unexpected arguments. But uh, definitely you can use uh, Ruby 3.0 without uh, any usage of RBS because uh, background compatibility for Ruby core team is uh, some, something uh, uh, sacral, you know? Uh, so no need to add type signatures to any of your uh, Ruby of 3.0 code. But if you want to ensure that uh, your types are correct and your code is more strictly validated than tests that you wrote in your spec, uh, this actually means that uh, type signatures might, uh, might save you. Great, thank you. Uh, and one more um, regarding types. Um, do you happen to know, is there any planning uh, support or like developing for uh, generics in type checking? Ruby. Well, I'm not sh quite sure that uh, they will uh, support generics themselves, but uh, they do have an interface uh, stuff. You can uh, take a look on it uh, on uh, RBS documentation uh, and uh, some sort of uh, type parameters. Uh, it's not generics, uh, but well, <laughs> at least something uh, working a bit similarly. Uh, but uh, I have uh, a question for you. Uh, can you imagine a use case for oh. that? Yeah, well, uh, I, I suppose when I, uh, when I try to type some, uh, some object, I guess. Mm -hmm. In general. Uh, Oh, when you're right. passing uh, some object, we should follow an interface section effectively. Like uh, something callable, for example, so you, it, you... it might be proc lambda or some uh, plain old Ruby object with uh, call method implemented, right? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, in this case, you can just use an interface and, uh, mm -hmm. and it will work. But uh, I'm not, okay. uh, I, I can say is this, this is the easiest part of type signatures in RBS. 
So that's why for me, I consider that it's limited production ready use for something for some simple stuff. And you will have a lot of uh, tears and, and a lot of fun moments when you try to have 100% coverage in your Ruby project. I'm pretty sure about that. 